want to know how the best graffiti artists and graffiti writers avoid getting caught while doing illegal graffiti, like what almost happened to me when I was in Australia, more on that later, then stick around. Today we're talking about the top five smartest things that graffiti writers do to avoid getting caught while doing illegal graffiti. I'll explain why graffiti artists do each of these things, including why the one in the thumbnail is such a high IQ graffiti play. So let's get right to it. But a quick word, you know how if you're watching like a stock trading video or a finance video, the person will say, this is not financial advice. Well, this is not graffiti advice. I wouldn't want anyone to accidentally interpret this as me saying you should do illegal graffiti. That is a choice that all of these graffiti artists we're looking at today have made for themselves and it can have some pretty annoying consequences. So this is not graffiti advice. Today we're just looking at how they do it. Number five, this one is specifically for train painting and it's simply that smart graffiti writers will bring tools with them. This can include bolt cutters. They're the biggest one. They're the key to the city, if you will. Crowbars, manhole keys. I don't think that's the proper term for them, but that's what we're calling them. These are all tools that a lot of serious graffiti crews especially will bring with them to gain access to a freight yard or an underground train yard. How does this help graffiti artists not get caught? Well, creating your own entrances and exit points help graffiti writers avoid security in some instances, but more more commonly cameras especially. So having these entry and exit points that are where you want them means graffiti artists can put them where they're the most convenient and stealthy for their cruise graffiti missions. The next smart thing that graffiti artists do to not get caught, but also to stay safe in this instance, and this might sound really obvious to some, but it's not wearing headphones. This is especially the case for if you're in a freight yard. Believe it or not, graffiti artists are killed by trains a lot more often than you might think, and knowing when you need to move is your best defense. It's your best defense in terms of safety, like I said, or not getting caught. I know if you're used to painting big pieces, especially at free walls, you usually have your headphones in in and it's just a nice painting sesh. You're just in your zone painting. So it can seem sort of foreign to be in a freight yard painting in absolute silence, but it can actually be quite a peaceful experience painting in a dead silent freight yard like that as well. Just hearing the creaks of the trains and whatnot, allegedly that is. Number three, for graffiti artists, anonymity is their friend. A graph writer's safety comes from not being seen and not being Heard. So, for example, dressing in fairly dark clothing so that you're not drawing attention to yourself, that's all good. That's a 100 IQ graffiti writer play right there. Most graph heads know to do that, but fewer graffiti artists are concerned with making sure they're not heard as well, and that can be a high IQ graffiti buff right there. Can magnets can be a tool that can help graffiti artists and writers not be heard if they're still using brands of paint that have metal mixing balls in them. A lot have switched to plastic, but some very prominent ones still do have metal mixing balls. You don't really realize how loud a spray can actually is, whether it's the actual spray sound or the mixing ball, until you're in a silent place trying to paint. It is horrible. It is is so loud. So even getting one can magnet that you transfer between cans while you uh, pick one up and put one down can make a huge difference for the graffiti writer's stealth. A lot of writers even use like fishing magnets, uh, like the ones on screen here. Those are ones that I've seen on Amazon. There's lots around there if you want to poke around. I linked it. Number two, and this is a weird one, but it'll make sense once I explain it. Dress like you're hiking. Let me explain. Firstly, you want good clothes with good pockets on them. Pockets, obviously you want to store any markers or whatever fairly easily and securely, but secondly, you want clothes that are practical and aren't going to get caught on anything. We've all seen those scenes in movies where there's a chase happening, someone tries to get over a fence, their sweater gets caught on it, it's just a whole thing. You don't want to have that if you're a graffiti artist in real life who needs to move fast and get away from security police, whatever. So a lot of the best graffiti artists are wearing practical 
clothing and a good backpack that they can move around with. The second part of my statement, dress like you're hiking, has to do, and I've mentioned this in other videos, just having a good pair of shoes. Don't bring your damn Crocs if you're gonna paint in a train yard. That is a 50 IQ graffiti play right there. And frankly, if you get caught with Crocs on, you get what you deserve, you know? That's, that's just it. And thirdly, I already sort of mentioned this, but you envision hikers having good backpacks, strapped on tight, you know, you can move around in them fairly well. If you're a graffiti artist out doing any kind of mission, you'll generally want to have fairly good organization. So a lot of uh, graffiti artists prepare their paint ahead of time, section it off in different places, in a bag, something like that. And a backpack is a great way for them to do that. Hell, even a fanny pack can be super effective, one of those over the shoulder cross bags, whatever the hell you call them. A lot of taggers have great success with those. Number one, but the number one thing that graffiti artists do to not get caught while they're doing graffiti is not wearing a balaclava or a t-shirt face mask. Those are 100 IQ graffiti plays, but it is wearing a COVID mask while doing graffiti. This is a 200 IQ graffiti play for two main reasons here, guys. And the second one is gonna blow your mind. The first reason, it does exactly what those first two options do, but way less suspiciously. I'll give you an example. If an old woman sees someone in the distance with a balaclava on, which in this case is a graffiti writer just doing their thing, this is what goes through their head. They've got a gun. They've got a gun, they're robbing a bank. <laughs> and then they call the police or something like that, right? Whereas if someone sees someone else in the distance with a mask on, even outdoors really, you don't think that much of it nowadays. So it gives a lot of graffiti artists and specifically graffiti taggers mostly in these scenarios, the same protection against camera recognition that a balaclava or a t-shirt mask would give you, but without being such a suspicious dude, you know? But the real reason that this is such a smart thing that graffiti artists do is because in a lot of countries like Canada where I am and a few other countries as well, there's specifically a law that says it's illegal to cover your face while committing a crime. Now as weird and wacky as that might sound, one of the reasons that that law is in place is because it's another charge they can tack on top of someone who they're trying to charge with really any crime in the first place, but also because it helps them prove intent, sort of. So although a lot of graffiti taggers are still technically concealing their face with a COVID mask, it might make it a lot harder for prosecutors to prove that intent based on a face covering in this instance. So it is, number one, that concealment tactic that graffiti artists are using in this case, but it's also a bit of a contingency plan for them as well. But if you wanna see a real life scenario of this kind of thing, and you wanna see how I almost got arrested in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia, when I was over there painting a piece. Check the video out right now on screen. You can see the whole thing there. Uh, it's a, it was a crazy time, let me tell you. I'll see you over there soon. Until then, peace.